Chain Stacks on the radio. Oh, yeah. I love that. Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky in Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're listening on Saturday, March 28th at 1 p.m. Central on 101.1 FM the answer in the Little Rock Central Arkansas area or via the online stream at 1011fmtheanswer.com or if you're listening after the fact via podcast or on Krypton Radio or on YouTube or one of the other ways the show goes out. I'm just so glad to have you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Wanted to uh, We're going to jump right in to today's show. It's a pre-recorded interview with Ed Greenwood and Alex Kammer talking about a new Forgotten Realms product, which is really cool. We have a great conversation. We talk about some of the history of the Forgotten Realms and the original map that uh, Ed drew for the Forgotten Realms and Warp. So we're about to jump right in. Just wanted to make a quick note that sponsor Collector's Edition slash the comic book store, Michael Tierney, his stores are still open. However, he is uh, closing on Sunday and Monday now. Normally, it's just Sundays, and every day's hours are 10 to 5. So anyway, without further ado, here is the interview. All right, so I am talking with two very cool folks who have both been on the show before. I want to thank you both for making time to come on. From the safety of our hermetically sealed bubbles, I'm talking with uh, Ed Greenwood and Alex Kammer. So again, both returning guests. I'm so glad to have you both on the show and it, and I'm glad for something fun to talk about right now. You know, let's, let's acknowledge that we have to be wise and be aware of what's happening in the world, but there's fun stuff to talk about too. And, and this is cool because for me, not only are, are two developers and game designers that I think are cool people working together for, is this, is this the first time y'all, y'all have worked together? Oh, no. Oh, no? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, so there's good. Two cool game designers are working together. But the other thing is there's, there's a new product, a new official Forgotten Realms product coming to the DMs Guild. And so I want to talk about that a little bit today. Talk about, you know, how these guys kind of came to came to work in, on it, came to work together on it, I should say. But uh, I want before we do all that, uh, I just want to ask, I'm going to start with Alex and then I'll move over to Ed. Alex, other than this new uh, Forgotten Realms product uh, that you're working with Ed on and is and is soon to appear in the DMs Guild, is there anything else you're working on right now that you want people to know about? Well, yeah, I'm uh, always working on. I always have a few sticks in the fire. Uh, yeah. One is I'm uh, doing another uh, big book for Frog God Games. This is going to be a horror themed adventure uh, set in their Lost Lands setting. Uh, nice. It's going to be up uh, called uh, in the. Sep- part of the uh, uh, Lost Lands appropriately titled The Haunted Steps. Uh, so uh, I'm doing that with, uh, I'm co-authoring that one as well with uh, my friend Alan Patrick. Alan is one of the D&D AL admins and uh, a very well-credentialed author. And so this is going to be fun. We're going to write a big setting and adventure book uh, on this area. And we're just getting started. That's going to be a 2021 release. Cool. Uh, Beyond that, you know, the usual stuff, you know, we have all kinds of, uh, you know, keeping game hole con, you know, uh, between the ditches yeah. <laughs> and moving forward. You know, that's that we, we we're dealing as a community with all these con closures. Mine is, is in November. That seems like a long, long time away, but that really isn't when you're, when you're doing a convention planning for a, a show our size. Right. So, you know, we're kind of watching with bated breath to see how what happens here if we uh, are going to be able to do a show or not. Same thing with one of my other hats, which is True Dungeon. Uh, I was, you know, was going to ask how, how I bet you a true dungeon is taking yeah, shockwaves I mean, w- right now. Yeah, Sure. Every time a show closes that we're there, obviously that's something we don't do. And, uh, you know, we have uh, material written, uh, sets built. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, volunteer actors that are queued up and ready to go. And it's a big operation. So uh, just like everyone else who's in, in, in experiencing disruptions and, and trying to navigate those waters, you know, we're on the gaming side. We're doing that too. Um, so that's, the, that's, what's going on in me. The great pause of 2020 and I'm not making light that's of right. it. I mean, you know, we're, yeah. we're in the middle of navigating it right now. And, you know, as I was saying before we started recording, I, I'm not diminishing 
there's a lot of people being disrupted in many industries, including the gaming industry. And some people may not know that, uh, you know, another industry that I'm close to is very important to me. And I talk about a lot is the comic book industry uh, and Diamond, which is the 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 distributor for for comic books. It suddenly said, we're not taking any new comic books. So they single handedly have shut down the new comics industry indefinitely. So there's a lot, a lot of that going on right now. But, but some cool stuff is that we live in an age where, for example, the DMs Guild, a new product can come out, show up on the DMs Guild, and people can get it electronically. And, and you know, so that's the, the, that's something positive we can talk about. And folks, I'll I will uh, I'll put in the show notes for the podcast and uh, Krypton Radio and YouTube version of the show. There's some previous shows I've done with Alex where we talked about his RPG design, but also True Dungeon, which we don't have time to really get into. But it's a it's a live action dungeon you can do, uh, and it's it sounds so cool. So uh, th- as soon as I can get somewhere that has a has a true dungeon, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. So, Alex, you know, so Game Hole Con is in November. We'll have to wait and see. And the, but right now, True Dungeon, you know, that's any con where they were supposed to be is is that's getting canceled. Obviously, they're not at. So we hope that you know things get back to normal, uh, not just for fun, but for people to work and to to get out and stuff like that. So if you, is that you got anything else going on there, Alex? Before I shift over to. Uh, Ed, no, that's plenty for me. I appreciate it, though. Let's let's talk to my friend Ed for, Ed for a bit here. Yeah. I'm sure he's got <laughs> always has stuff going on, so I can't wait to hear about it. Yeah, I'm sure all these people that are listening are like, "Who's this Ed Greenwood guy?" They just have no clue. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. This is Ed Greenwood, who's you know been a major figure in 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 D and D and RPG gaming for for decades. Ed, why don't you tell us about this new product, uh, this new uh, source book? Forgotten Realm source book that's coming soon to the DMs Guild, and then after you kind of introduce it, I'll let I, Alex kind of add to the add to the flavor there. Okay, um, let's go back to our childhood, childhood, childhood. No, uh, okay, yeah. years and years ago, I created a little corner of the Forgotten Realms, and for those of you who are keeping score, it's the southern shore of the Lake of Steam, east of Kalimshan, across the Sodolfor Strait. And nestled in between the coast of the Lake of Steam and the first little land rise, the one that isn't called the land rise on the maps, where the Shar begins. The Shar is a large plateau, and it's the little verdant, hilly, heavily forested, little curving lanes winding all over it, well watered with lots of little streams and rills and a few larger rivers, little strip of land that is known as the Border Kingdoms. And it's where adventurers go to forge a kingdom for themselves. So Hmm. there's an awful lot of... um, If you've ever been to rural Pennsylvania and you've seen lots and lots of farm fields that are steeply pitched as slopes with um, hedges of uh, stumps and stones and little lanes winding every which way because... Uh, there was no way you were going to go straight down that slope, like over the edge of the cliff, so you switch back. That's a lot of the border kingdoms are like that. And the kingdoms in the border kingdoms could only be, in some cases, two or three pastures in size. But they may be known as the Grand Duchy of so-and-so, or the peerless radiant realm. Right. They, got, they have grandiose, grandiose titles, even though they, yeah. they might be like two football fields. Yeah. yeah. And the, and he'll point at the pig barn across the lane and say, but that is the evil kingdom of, you know, <laughs> okay. And that's because these adventures have come along and taken over something, bought something or slaughtered the evil wizard who was squatting in something and taken it over as their own. And this has gone on for centuries. Now, so in, these are the border kingdoms. In lore, like in actual compiled lore of the Forgotten Realms, how far back does to these to these go? Like uh, were, were in, they they were they in the original Forgotten Realms that you conceived yep. of? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um that would be ten years before there was a thing called D and D. 
Gotcha. Okay, so this okay, is and this isn't the, anything new that you're adding to the Forgotten no, Realms. This is this is in the 1960s. Now, in the <laughs> published realms, I have attempted to detail the Border Kingdoms twice before this, three times actually, but we'll get to that. Um, the first one was in the pages of Polyhedron, and I got to about H or I in the alphabet before Polyhedron went away. And then in the book that became known as Power of Faroon in third edition. That sounds, book, I have to interrupt you. That sounds like an 80s cartoon from Filmation. The Power of Faroon, right? I'm sorry. Hey, I I'm did. Sorry. Okay. We don't get to title these things. It was called <laughs> Ruling the Realms all the time I was working And then on suddenly it. it was the Power of Faroon. Power of Faroon. I love yes. it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Know, uh, but, With but, Orca, um, anyway. Yeah, uh, I had I had a little bit at the back, a few pages. So I made a valiant attempt to revisit some of the things in the Border Kingdoms, and then it ended. So we flash forward to Gamehole Con. Dun, dun, dun. I cede the floor to Alex, who right. runs the best gaming convention going, Gamehole Con. So anyway, and okay, so let me set the scene. Alex is a game hole con eating a taco and he's eating a taco and everybody hears this sort of distant whooshing noise. And about every time, about the time that everyone's going to take cover, the border kingdoms smashes to the ceiling and erupts into game hole con and the rest is history. So what happened next, Alex? Uh, it's pretty much that. I mean, oh, exactly. Go, well, yeah. nailed it. It's pretty <laughs> factually correct. Uh, well, what happened was now. What year this, was this? This is uh, so. This would have been 2015. Uh, is when the events that I'm going to describe start. Right uh, after you climbed edition, out from under the table. That's right. That's right. <laughs> With taco in hand. Um, <laughs> you you saved the taco, Alex. Always, always. It's like a sniper and his rifle. You know, that's how you handle it. So, um, so uh, once uh, uh, this, we've had the good fortune of Gamehole Con ascending exactly the same time as Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. Gamehole Con one, we were, and two actually, we were playing some game called D and D Next. Yeah. Uh, and just splashing mm -hmm. around with it. So uh, the third year of our show is when 5th edition D&D &D was formally launched. Uh, and to obviously massive reception, and we won't go right. into that. And for those, it's been good. Yeah. For, just for those folks who, who may not know, D&D &D Next was what they called the playtest version of 5th edition. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Sorry. Um, so uh, as with every edition of D&D, &D, they've at least attempted a organized play wing of each edition. I believe. I think, he, yes, yes, there has been. Even 4th edition did. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we, of course, were very interested in having lots of that at our show. And as of now, as where we stand today, fast forward, we have the largest Adventure League hall in the country. Actually, in the world. We have the largest D&D &D Adventure League hall in the world. That's one of our main things. So let's back describe how that happened. Part of it is that uh, the, my friends at Wizards of the Coast were coming to uh, our show in mass, and they've come every year, all the folks that you're familiar with, people like Chris Perkins and Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford and Chris Lindsay and so on. And we've become all good friends, and they really enjoy our show, which has been great. Uh, and I started talking to them about the ability to publish our own adventures that we write and not be limited just to what Wizards is producing uh, for Adventure League. Uh, you know, they, they have limitations on what they can do and they're trying to serve a lot of different shows. Mm -hmm. So at this, they were at the set, it happened to, when I made this ask, they were just coming up with the con created content concept that they're going to let con certain conventions do, uh, basically create their own content for Adventures League, which was great. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, uh so that once we started off very, we started off with that. And actually, that's how Ed and I, that was our first official collaboration, is that we wrote a trilogy of modules, adventures, set in the Moonsay region, uh, because that's where all the, the Moonsay, that's where all the Adventure League uh, adventures were taking place for the first, I believe, three seasons. Uh, now, is so, that, that's where you have the folk with two Fs, the folk. No, the that's Moonshays. Moonshays. That's the Moonshays. You yeah. said Moonsea. Moonsea. Moon Moon okay. 
All right. Yep. Gotcha. Sevenfold key. Yes. yes. Mm. Okay. Them. All right. So, uh, and that went well, and uh, people liked the, the the not only stuff that Ed and I wrote, but other things that we that the show was producing. So I got asked then by folks at Wizards, "Hey, we're going to test something. Out. We're going to try something." Alex, is there some spot in the Forgotten Realms, off the beaten path, away from Waterdeep, or away from the Sword Coast, and away from the Moon Sea, that you would like to have as your own setting in which to create adventures? And of course, I said, fantastic. So yep. I quickly picked up the phone, called my friend Ed, and said, Ed, what do you think? And he gave immediately produced a list of 10 areas that he thought would be good. And we just started going back and forth and talking about which one would be the best for this. And we ultimately arrived on the Border Kingdoms for all the reasons that Ed just gloriously underscored. Uh, it's temperate, it's it's chaotic, it's got everything that adventures are interested in as far as, uh, you know, there's every type of uh, in, uh, interesting environments, uh, big cities, small hamlets, right. uh, chaos, just you can, you can, you can write any story can can fit there nicely. Well, what it so evokes we for, got, ex- oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what it evokes for me is there was a time where the predominant arc for D and D players was you rose in level and built a kingdom or carved out a kingdom, uh, you know, as you leveled up, uh, you know, so it evokes that sort of that play to me where, you know, you're going to go in and you're going to adventure adventure for the sake of, uh, fame and glory and carve yourself out a kingdom, which there's nothing wrong with this arc where the world is threatened and you're the only hero saving the world. Those are fun too, but there's also a, a lot of fun in just going out there and adventuring and see how high you can get, you know? So uh, I'm not, I'm not saying that that is what the thrust of the product that you're creating is, but that's what it evokes for me when you talk about these border kingdoms. Sure. And that that's all possible. That's what's so right. great about the Border Kingdoms. And that's why Ed and I chose uh, as the Game Hole Con's official spot. And I'll, t- I'll babble a little more and then I'll turn the mic back over to Ed. But the uh, you were prescient, actually, in, in referencing the Moonshe Isles, because that's the other area where another group called Baldman Games selected mm. to do their work. And Baldman Games is uh, my friend Dave Christ, who runs that Enterprise. He is in charge of Winter Fantasy. He does D and D at Origins and does D and D at Gen Con. So those are the two parts of the Forgotten Realms that were ceded to, I guess, private entities to develop Neat. material. And so that's what uh, Ed and I then have been right did uh, some adventures together in the Border Kingdoms as well. Um, and it also then gave, as we said, well, geez, this is our land. Let's we need to have a setting book of some sort. And we released one. And that that that. That book that we released is a well, it's a it's a pale comparison of what you're about to get. But what it is is all the lore that Ed had already worked on, plus some additional stuff to finish his alphabetical run. Yeah. And we threw it together in kind of a word document and put it on the on the DMs on the DMs Guild without much ado. Uh, we used an old map that Wizards had from I don't even know what edition it's from, uh, and not much else. <laughs> so what and was it, the know, reception like the, on that? How was the reception there? It was good. People, you know, people love content and setting content. Listen, guys, the Forgotten Realms is the ding dong daddy of RPG settings. I mean, it just is, you know, uh, we are, our my gaming group. I feel so old. Yeah, it's the ding dong. <laughs> well, you could be the ding dong daddy and not, and not, it'd still be on the scene. What I'm saying is it's just, there's so much, you know, it's. It's there's been so much world building, there's been so many stories, there's been so much play in in the Forgotten Realms that it's just rich and and you know um, I mean I'm I am not implying I don't mean anything like that like like the people are doing cash grabs I'm just saying that if you put something out in the Forgotten Realms it has an automatic built in interest level uh, and I and I'm glad because most people think of the Forgotten Realms as a sword coast. And it's not. There's nothing wrong with the Sword Coast. Sword Coast is a lot of fun. That's a very good epic high fantasy setting to adventure in. You know, you've got um, oh, where uh, I can't believe I'm free. Is it the Ten Towns? The the northern area where uh, Wolfgar and Dritzt and all that was was uh, I don't know those towns. I forget what it's called. I can't believe I'm forgetting that. And then you got the the Moonshe Isles, and you got all these other areas, and you know, Alex, I think that's cool that uh, it, it was. You said it's Winter's Fantasy, and what was your friend's name again? 
Dave, David Christ is Christ. the fellow who runs it. Yep. I think that's great that they're doing stuff in the Moonshay Isles because a lot of people don't know the first book ever published for the Forgotten Realms was actually in Moonshay, not in, you know, the more traditional part of the Forgotten Realms. So I think that's wonderful. Let me point out one quick thing because you asked about when yeah. the uh, at what point did the Border Kingdoms arrive in the Forgotten Realms. That was right. original. The Moonshay yeah. Isles is not. Right. Did Niles, Douglas Niles came up with the Moonshay Isles, right? Well, I'll defer to Ed on that. Yeah. No. No, he didn't? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll just wind that PSR. back. <laughs> no, no. TSR UK. Yeah. Uh, the UK arm of TSR became a reprint house later. But at the time, it was producing its own original content. And the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh and that was recently redone for fifth yeah, edition Ghosts of Salt was Marsh, based right. on some of their early. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, Doug Niles, who was an in-house designer at TSR was doing his own setting for them, which was known as Albion, you know, the mm-hmm. archaic name for England. Right. And um, Grub needed a home for it after TSR UK became a reprint house. And the whole point of them buying the forgotten realms was to be able to bolt on everything for the second edition of the game. Like Jeff's original white paper was proposal for a unifying game world for the second edition of D&D. And it said there was a list, Arabian Adventures, which became El Hadim, Pirate Adventures, Uh, um, Jungle Adventures, which became Malatra, the the living jungle, Um, Oriental Adventures, which became, ta-da, Oriental Adventures. Right. <laughs> you know, there was a whole list of things that had to fit in. And what he said was, uh, Ed, can we take your Moonshe Isles, which looked sort of like the Hebrides in the yeah. real world, or Ursula Le Guin's Ursi, which, by right. the way, she, she swiped the uh, geographical layout from the Hebrides. Lots of little islands right. with people sailing back and forth. And... Uh, can we sink your moonshays and just drop Doug's in, into its spot? I said, sure. I knew that this was going to happen with the realms. Might as well start right. off on the right foot. So that's where the moonshays came from. Now, Eric Menji and so on has done a huge source book to go with the... Uh, um, so we're doing ours. <laughs> well, I think that like the moon... And I know, we're, I know we're here to talk about the border kingdoms, but you know, kind of going back to the moonshays... I always just kind of got a feeling that that was kind of like the, the, like we're talking about Albion, you know, ancient mm-hmm. England. That was it was kind of a Celtic, Druidic mm-hmm. type of area of the Forgotten Realms. Yep. That was always kind of the vibe I got off of it. So, yeah, and yeah. it was supposed to be. It was supposed yep. to be the matter of Brit, King Arthur, Merry Oldie England, right? And and it was supposed to have that. And uh, in second edition. I got tasked with doing a huge campaign module for it. And um, I spent all my time getting the adventure out of the way as fast as possible so I could put all the space into the appendices that had the moon wells and how they worked. And all Everybody cool knows stuff. the appendices is where the fun stuff is. Yeah! Yeah. Heck, <laughs> heck yeah. All right, so I want to take it back uh, to, to the Border Kingdoms. The Border Kingdoms, which is the focus of... Uh, what you call it in a module source book. How would you describe this new product? It's, it, it's a setting book. It's purely setting. setting. What it is, is giving, okay. giving details on the adventure. Now to go back, Shane, you asked about how well was our initial, um, uh, setting material received. It was very well received. So shortly after debuting, I got contacted by the folks at OBS that actually run the DMs guild and said, Hey, um, it would be cool if you folks would put together a little more detailed version and we could do a POD version. So I said, hey, that's a really good idea. Let me contact Wizards and see if they're interested in making – because I wasn't really interested in doing – and no shame to people who are just putting out content on the DMs, DMs Guild. It's a wonderful platform. Right. That's but just I not to do your something. particular interest. Right. Well, no. I wanted yeah. to do something that was, that was going to become canon if I was going to put that time in. I just don't have a lot of I, – I have limited – I, this is not my full time job. Right. So when I when yeah. I'm going to work on a freelance thing, I want it, I re- want it to count. So I reached out to my friends at Wizards and said, Hey, you know, we're interested in 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 really making this a, a polished product. 
Are you guys willing to put your imprimatur behind it? Are you willing to help us with that? Uh, and they very quickly said yes. Uh, they gave us uh, some uh, art uh, art resources and uh, cartography re- resources, and that's where the genesis of the Mike Schley map is coming. We have a brand new, beautiful uh, map that ma- that uh, was commissioned by Wizards that Mike did that will be in this book. So what's nice about this is that it is going to be on the DMs Guild, and it's going to be print on demand in both soft cover and hardbound, and also a PDF. Uh, but this is this is going to be an official Wizards release. So this is going to be cannot this is going to be canon, and uh, th- and Wizards is delighted because you know here we are doing it all. <laughs> They've had to put very little into it, and they're getting a book out of it, and uh, so it's it's really great. Uh, and so that's and I then. There are lots of details in the book itself, and I'll let you know. Turn the mic back over to Ed to, to share some of those. Uh, I want to point out when when Alex says that the Border Kingdoms, which is the name of the setting book, it's you know you might you could really it's just the Border Kingdoms, but you could say Forgotten Realms colon the Border Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cover, the front and back cover, look like a Wizards of the Coast D and D five E release. It, it follows exactly. that same uh, font style, the art style, the layout. The back of it has that sort of half of it is kind of a black rough with text on it. And the other half is, you know, art. Uh, I mean, you're basically, the only difference is you're getting it to the DMs Guild instead of like at your friendly local game store or whatever. So Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that wasn't by accident, obviously. I we right. hired a, a, someone who does layout work for Wizards. Um, right. Simple as that, and uh, and the 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 front cover is beautifully illustrated by Britt Martin, who does great work, and he's written he's he's done illustrations for all kinds of of publishers. Uh, so we definitely had that style in mind. I mean, we want we want Five E Al and Forgotten Realms fans to look at this product and say this looks like this looks like what I'm expecting. And in right. terms of the interior quality of the 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 the, the frequency of of illustrations and the size of illustrations, it's going to look very familiar to you when you open it up. Okay, well, it looks great. So, and you did mention earlier, this can you can either get it digitally or print on demand. Is that correct? Correct. This both print on demand. Okay. Yep. Hardbound and softbound. Nice. So it's, you can get a hardbound if you want it. Okay. Yep. And I know you're kicking it back over to Ed. I haven't forgotten about that. But when you tweeted about this on March 11th, Alex, one of the very first questions you got was also dot 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 when is soon so what are, what do we have a date yet you know we don't and i keep flubbing this because i'm uh i'm not uh, the the inner workings of obs are a little obfuscated to uh, right. the, a lay person like myself but what i'm waiting for now is that they're actually going to produce a, a print proof which is great i'm delighted they're going to do that so they're going to send send me a couple of print proofs which i will share with our you know with ed and other friends right. and we're going to take a look at it and make sure it all lines up that should be Within the week, and okay. as soon as I we get that and we look at it and give them a thumbs up, then all those links go live, and it's just a simple matter of you know nice. a few mouse clicks away, and then it's on, and we're live. So, man, I I, I thought we'd have I thought by the time we did That's this funny. show that we'd be yeah. live, but I think it's going to be another week or so. Well, I still think by the you know a lot of people listen to the radio show version, which goes out on Saturdays, but an equal if not greater amount of people, especially if I'm talking Forgotten Realms and I've got you know people like you on. A lot of people will listen to the podcast version and that won't go out. You know, the show will broadcast Saturday and the podcast version will go out sometime within the week after that. One other thing I want to point out based on what you just said, they're doing a print proof. Okay. Not everything that's print on demand on these digital services get a quote unquote print proof. A lot of times they'll just take the PDF and say, we're going to print this PDF for you. But to, but to show the level of quality that's happening here, you're not getting a PDF. If you get the if you get the softback or the hardback, you're not getting a physical copy as an afterthought. They want to make sure that that this product is 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 has been laid out and is the right quality and all that for print. And not every product out there on OBS systems gets that treatment. So oh, that's I, true. That's yeah, true. The whole that point out. is that this hardbound, if you order it, should yeah. should should uh, stack in lovely with your other five E Wizards yeah. books and be indistinguishable in terms of shape, binding, paper quality, everything. Yeah. All right, that's a great point for a break. So we're going to pause briefly, hear from our sponsors who help keep the show on the air, and then we'll be back with more Ed Greenwood and Alex Cammer 
on Forgotten Realms, the Border Kingdoms. We'll be right back. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Are you a fan of thrilling adventure, daring suspense, and just a touch of romance? Kursova has you covered. Since 2016, Kursova has been publishing the very best in contemporary fantasy and science fiction, retro pulp, and for you D&D gamers, Appendix N style fiction. Based in Little Rock, you can pick up their flagship magazine locally or at Michael Tierney's The Comic Book Store on Treasure Hill Road or Collector's Edition on JFK in North Little Rock. Swing by one of Michael's stores and pick up an issue or find them on Amazon. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. It doesn't start with a K. It starts with a C. C-I-R-S-O-V-A. Cursova Magazine. Check them out today. You want to go ahead and throw out some love to Game Goblins. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40k, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there is plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. And folks, if you do visit any of my sponsors, please tell them that you hear about them on the show. That helps them know uh, that their advertising money and the relationship we've built is, is time and money well spent. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. And we're back on Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. We're talking with Alex Cammer and Ed Greenwood, uh, RPG designers, and in Ed's case, very famous uh, fantasy novelist uh, and creator of the Forgotten Realms. And we're talking with them about a new Forgotten Realms product called the Border Kingdoms. And we will get back with Ed and Alex here in just a moment. First, I want to throw out some quick show notes. This show does go out as a podcast a few days after the radio broadcast version. And when it does so, if you're listening to the podcast or on YouTube or Krypton Radio, you can find the show notes at shameplays.com. That's S-H-A-N-E. P A or P L A Y S dot com, shameplays.com. Podcast will go out on, on that website, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, YouTube, and more. And last but never ever least, Shame Plays is carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci fi for your Wi Fi. Kryptonradio.com. And now, back to the interview with Ed Greenwood and Alex Kammer on their new Forgotten Realms product, The Border Kingdoms. See, I love your cover. I love this kind of cover art where you're seeing stuff in media res. You know, I've got I've got a group of adventurers here fighting like a manacore and some other stuff. And that's cool. You know, well, Ed, 
Yeah. <laughs> Speak to that. This was yeah. Ed's idea. Ed yeah. Ed come up, came up with a concept, and 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 I was just the the the, the uh, merely the intermediary between he and Britt to come up with this beautiful cover. Yeah, let's talk about this cover for a second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the cover. Uh, okay. There, there's two things you want to do in a cover. You want to grab the reader, and or the viewer in the store, and then you want to make them feel at home. And this says D and D right away. Now, to me, the only other thing that the cover needs to do for the Border Kingdoms, if you flip the book over and look at the back cover, yeah, I see it. Yeah, you get to see, hey, this is a huge area, and it's varied and it's interesting, mm -hmm. and I want to know more about. It. So you take the front cover, which has the fight. This is what's going to happen to you if you go there. <laughs> right. but, but the background is sort of misty, but it is a different terrain than the back. And then you show the back and you go, oh, there's everything here. I yeah. want to get into this. So yeah. that, that's what the cover does. The it's back beautiful. is cool. Thank you, it, Alex. It's beautiful. <laughs> it, yeah, it looks great. The back is, um, and I believe in the, a lot of people don't like to, I believe in the power of people's imagination. So I'm going to describe the back. Um, especially gamers, it, you, you've got you, you've got at least four uh, in, in, in a in a in a fairly compact space. You have at least four region types. You have mountains. You have uh, plains that could almost be farmland. Uh, you've got a dense city, and then you've got towers. And on top of the tower, you have I believe that's a Bahir. Uh, is that it looks really cool. So uh, it, it shows a wide diversity. And, and like Ed was saying, when he first introduced the border kingdoms, these kingdoms are very compact and pressing up against each other. Uh, so, you know, you could go just, you know, within a league or two and maybe go through two or three kingdoms or uh, whatever. You know, they, they consider themselves duchies or kingdoms. You said they're... They can, uh, well, they call yeah. themselves whatever they wanted. Yeah. But like I said, Somebody's pig barn might be the Grand Duchy of such right. and such. I love it. You know? yeah. <laughs> and of course, the Grand Duchy of such and such might be a ruin. Right. He might be dead. Right. And there might be legends of all the treasure he buried because he was a rich adventurer. Yeah, and he lived there. And he grew to be so fat, he couldn't get out of his chair. And so eventually, his heart gave out. So they buried him, but they could never find his treasure. I'll so it's you. still there. I'll tell you what this makes, what this the vibe I get off this, but on a much grander scale, is you know everybody's played the keep on the borderlands, right? Mm -hmm. And let's just go, let's let's leave the keep, and let's go to the caves of chaos, and we don't know what we're going to find. Well, this is like the caves of chaos, but but on you know a uh, exponential level of another ten. Each kingdom is is an adventure in itself so you know you never know what you're going to find in the next kingdom and, and and i like it a lot so uh and then of course on and it's not just about border disputes and kings and you know it's the the cover is making it very clear that you're going to adventure you know you're going to you're going to fight monsters and have challenges and and all that good stuff so um you know and 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 that uh that brings me to another uh Quick question. Now, you said it's a setting book, but I mean, are there, does each kingdom or duchy or whatever kind of have its own adventure hook or how is this kind of, or are you leaving a lot of blank space for people to create their own kingdoms or is every kingdom, you know, I mean, how are you guys approaching that? Go ahead, Ed. Do you yeah, feel that one? We do. There are some adventure hooks in the book, but, you know, I'll let right. Ed speak yeah. to that. Okay. So in the book, there are three things. Um, jump on me, Alex, if I leave something out. Um, the the bulk of the book is an alphabetical tour. The thing I was trying earlier, okay, for uh, the Border Kingdoms, A to Z. And everything gets its own entry. And something may be just maybe a river or a stream, and it gets an alphabetical entry. Something may be a huge kingdom. And it gets an alphabetical entry. We, the one thing we lacked in this book was we didn't give you Durlusk, the city, with a street map, or Obel, the town, with a street map, 
we kept the tour running to cover everything, okay? And almost every little place has an adventure hook or two built into it, just in our description of its history, how it got its name, what you'll find there now. So there are little adventure hooks seeded throughout the entire geographical tour. There is an entire section of the book of uber plots. Okay. So you will not find a finished, polished adventure between these covers. But then there's one problem with a finished, polished adventure. You play it, and it's done. It's done, right. This is a source book. It has uber plots that you can interweave, pick up, use. And, of course, that's what Alex and I were doing and all the other guys who were writing them, all the game hole guys. They were writing all these Adventures League adventures tied into uber plots. So we've given you a whole bunch of new uber plots. And we've also given you character backgrounds. If you're from the Border Kingdoms, if you've grown up there or if you've spent a lot of time there here is how you have unique skills to the area. So you have character backgrounds, you have uber plots, and you have a huge geographical tour. The whole point being that this is a book that if you didn't travel anywhere else in the Forgotten Realms, it could keep you busy for 20 years of real time, 20 years of play time, and you wouldn't get bored and you wouldn't say, oh, I need something else. But on the other hand, if you pick up something at DM's Guild or your friend writes an adventure or you pick up an old ancient Judge's Guild first edition adventure, you can go, oh, I can tweak this, change the armor and drop it in over here. It'll fit just fine because, hey, this place hosts everything. All right. Very cool. So, uh, you know, you, you guys have mentioned several times, but I haven't really jumped on this aspect yet. It's a hundred percent Adventurers League compatible. So for the for the people out there that are that are big Adventurers League players, not only is this a cool setting book, but it's another resource for Adventurers League. That's correct, and uh, importantly, especially for the uh, character backgrounds that Ed just mentioned, uh, you can play. Uh, and it eventually is character with any one of those 11 new character backgrounds and port that to any Adventure League game anywhere, your store, a different convention, anything. Those are all Adventure League legal everywhere. And that was a bit of an undertaking. And uh, the... Uh, uh, and, it, and I'm glad we did it. And it's 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 leading to different things. Which would maybe if we have a little few a little bit of time at the end, I want to talk about about some other things that we may be working on for Wizards as a result of the of what we've accomplished oh, here. I'm, I've always got time for the tease. Always. <laughs> yeah, I've always got time for the tease. So. Yes. Uh, okay. So can you? I'm going to read real quick the the tweet you pushed out or that you sent out a couple weeks ago that got a lot of people's attention. So you tweeted out on March 11th, Alex, uh, you said a little project that the Edverse and I have been working on, a brand new Border Kingdom source book, and every bit of it, Adventures League legal. A brand new map, I think you mentioned before, by uh, Mike, Sh it's Mike Schley, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does amazing, just really good maps. Uh, 11 new character background, tons of lore, and a ridiculous amount of new art. So can, can you tease us with one or two of the adventure, of the backgrounds? Like what kind of backgrounds they might find. Without, Ed, go ahead. There's a, those, this is away. your baby. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, oh, <laughs> the backgrounds. Oh, come on. Can't we keep something secret? How well, about here, just I'll, the uh, name? How about just I'll the name one. of the couple of backgrounds I'll, without I will details? Do, I'll do one. I'll do one because this was one that I created based on. Uh, so I took our original setting book and started flipping through it in the same way that Ed is exactly describing. And I, I, came upon a, a in the bees this fascinating little area called the Barony of Black Saddle. And I started reading about it and said, oh my gosh, there's all kinds of cool stuff happening here. I could write a, a massive adventure on this. But I wrote one, a uh, I think it was a tier two adventure for Adventures League set in the Barony of Black Saddle. And so from that, I created a character background called a Scofflaw of Black Saddle. And what that is, is a it's a criminal, but one that is uh, that has been forced to crime to 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 be a criminal for political reasons, not for the usual ways. This is uh, because of uh, the political skirmishes that have happened in that part of the border kingdoms. Uh, 
you are motivated to be uh, somewhat of a Robin Hood type, but more of that you're interested in tipping over uh, uh, local potentates uh, and, and return the land to, to the people and stuff like that. Uh, and so anyway, that's what that that's where that character background came from, simply from reading. Uh, this section that Ed penned years ago, and it's right. it, it lit my imagination on fire, and I'm still thinking about the Barony all the time. I I love that place, uh, and uh, so anyway, that's just one. So you're a political a political rogue, a, not a rogue in the sense of the class, but you you've you've been forced to act as an outlaw to to uh, yeah achieve change. yeah. So what was what was fun about it then when you're creating backgrounds is that they have. You know, the, the, if you look at the the fifth edition uh, player's handbook, and they have you know ideals and flaws, and all these character backgrounds have those, but they also have special abilities, and that was really fun to come up with. And uh, for the the uh, the uh, um, uh, the the uh, the one that I did for, that I was just describing the for for Black Saddle, um, I originally called it. Uh, you have the ability to MacGyver. MacGyver. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wizards, Wizards said, no, we can't call it that. Uh, so it's got renamed to something. Um, but basically what it is, is in a pinch, you have there are a couple of uh, different skill checks you can make. And using materials at hand, you can come up with a thing to help you out of a thing. I know what you called it. You called it paperclip omancy. <laughs> <laughs> close, close. But so anyway, each character background has something pretty cool like that. And that's where yeah. Ed and I really pushed it with <laughs> with Wizards. And there was a lot of back and forth as sure. to what they would let us do. And it was great. So the, the outcome has been great. I'm delighted with the way the character backgrounds turned out. Fantastic. Yeah. Right, okay, well, let, let, me, hmm. let me tease just one other character background. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, so there is a kingdom. There are three border kingdoms, the Mukshar kingdoms. And one of them... Hi, Mukshar. There was hi, middle, and whatever. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, in which there were these Druth. And a Druth is a band of doppelgangers led by a mind flayer. Like an adventuring band or a hunting band. You do not want to run into yeah, one Yeah, that's of some these. pretty freaky stuff right there. Yeah. Okay. So there is a character background called Druthguard. And it means that you... Or more likely, your great grandfather, great grandmother, grandmother came into contact with the Druth and survived. So, as a result, you have some special abilities to do with languages and shape changers. And Interesting. I won't say anything more. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that sounds really cool. So, and, and people are really into backgrounds. I mean, there's people who might buy this book just for the new backgrounds. I mean, I'm not saying that's the only reason to buy it, but, but players love new backgrounds and, and, and designers are getting more and more creative with backgrounds, you know, as, as Alex go on. did a bang yeah. up job on the backgrounds. They are <laughs> usable anywhere in the game. They are attractive. Tabletop RPG design in some ways is like video game design. And what I mean by that is is a few years after a new console comes out, people are doing stuff with the console that nobody ever dreamed of because they they know how it works now and the inner mm-hmm. guts and how to program it. And now that 5e has been out for a while and people have been tweaking backgrounds for a while, they're starting to be used in ways I think that people weren't anticipating. And that's not a bad thing. There's some really cool stuff going on to, you know, with backgrounds. Uh, you can, some backgrounds are almost mini classes these days. So, uh, and I'm not, you know, that's fine. People love to customize their characters. Well, all right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to start drawing us down. Uh, but I know Alex wanted to tease us. Well, so very, tease away. very briefly. So based on how well this project has gone and the, and I think I, I hope I speak for us both that we're both very proud of the of the book that hopefully everyone will have in their hands very soon. Uh, our friends at Wizards are very pleased as well. So we have already actually pitched 
another area of the Forgotten Realms that we can give similar treatment to, and they're mulling it over because this is a little bit of a departure for them, that they're allowing a third-party publisher, essentially what we are, to uh, create canon uh, for the Forgotten Realms as, as separate setting books. And uh, I think they, they like the idea, and they want to see how it goes initially uh, with uh, with their our first run, but they certainly like the product, and I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, maybe in a year or so, we, you can have us back, and we'll be telling you about sure. another area of the problems that we've uh, we've we've more fully detailed places that a place I think that everyone is very interested in, and people want to mm. go there. Let me see if I can guess what it is. It is the alley behind the alley that's adjacent to the yawning portal. <laughs> it's oh. an entire setting waiting to happen. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, that's another project I'm working on. <laughs> alleys, uh, alleys of the Forgotten Realms. A, a just new just remember that I have um, about 400 pages of details about Waterdeep that yeah. haven't been published yet. I love it. So and people are hungry for it. So <laughs> just say it. Well, it's it's been a pleasure, uh, Ed. There was one other thing I had. I'd actually meant to reach out to you this or to do a blog post on it or uh, something. I this came up a while ago and I made a note of it. There was a really interesting post I saw months ago where you were firmly dispelling the notion that the map of the forgotten realms was based on any real world map. Is that right? Okay. So I just want to give you this to confirm that people might find similarities, but it's not on purpose. The, the, the forgotten realms is its own map. It's not supposed to be. No, I I wasn't. No, I wasn't copying the globe or anything like that. Um, What I wanted to do, you see, it just sort of grew from Mert going down what became the Sword Coast from port city to port city in my short stories before there was a D&D game, okay? Um, I was world building, but I was world building the same way that Fritz Leiber world built for Foth and Grey Mouser. They were all episodes. Right. Yeah, and... And he, at, Mert, at the end of each short story, Mert would leave town in a hurry because he'd made new enemies. <laughs> his old trade rivals wanted him, yeah. and the local authorities now wanted him. So he'd move on down the coast to the next town. So I built the Sword Coast that way, okay? And that gave me a coastline. And I thought to myself, okay, what do I want to do? I want this. I want the coastline to be the west, uh, the sea to be the west, and this landmass to stretch out to the east. And I want to have a central sea because that makes it more interesting. You know, the fjords, the fiddly bits. Right. And you can say, you can turn back at it and say, oh, you obviously copied the Mediterranean. Well, maybe I did subconsciously. I just right, wanted an inner purpose. sea. Right. Yeah. You, just, you weren't pining for the fjords. We no, I was there was not no pining for the fjords. for the fjords happening. So, and I and I didn't want to have a large asteroid crater called right. Hudson's Bay in, in the middle right. of my map because that's valuable adventuring space. Right. Yeah. No, every space <laughs> no, must I, be adventured I, on and exploited. I, right? I just yeah. sort of built it, and it grew, but it grew following the rules of real world geology. You know, water runs downhill. Right. You know, all that stuff. Um. So. But no, nothing in my original realms was supposed to be a real-world analog. Now, when TSR got a hold of the realms, the fast way of explaining to a designer yeah. is make a real-world analog. And when you're already taking existing things, like the Moonshays with its Celtic mm-hmm. feel, like the Desert of Desolation modules with pyramids that you've already created, and you're retrofitting them into the Forgotten Realms then it it gets real world analogs and you add right. character they added character to put on an oriental so yeah the, it is now full of real world analogs but the original realm the original map doesn't okay. have yeah. so that's that's i think the confusion that some because some people are like no this is definitely so the point is your original map designs were not following a real world analog no, but no. but since then other other designers in TSR may have added stuff that was a real world analog, but yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, you see, as a role player, I hate it because if you if 
it's a new world. If it's a strange new world, the dungeon master is presenting the world to you, and you are role playing. You're reacting to this strangeness. If if it's a real world analog, there's always some guy at the table who says, oh, "But stirrups weren't invented right. until you yeah. know," and it, and it rips your mind out right. of the immersive play experience. And they also metagame. Now, wait a minute. The Roman legions were always organized yeah. like this. So, therefore, you know. Yeah. I agree you know, 100%. And you don't want that. Yeah, I agree 100%. I have people quibble occasionally. I'm like, well, how can they have played armor? Say, it's a fantasy. It's it's medieval yeah. high fantasy, and it's just fun. You know, yeah. or not even medieval. It's just epic high fantasy, and it's fun. You know, so. All right. Well, thank you. I uh, wanted to give you a chance to, to get some of that on record. I thought that was real. I love that kind of stuff. I can sit there and talk about where did the map from this come from for, rah, you know, I, I love that, that kind of discussion. So. I made it up. Yeah. Uh, my you little it. young self drew yeah. it and I thought it would be fun to have the coastline go in here and then there'd be a city right. here and cities are at the mouth of rivers. So there's got to be right. a river going up here. <laughs> well, uh, there you go. It's clear as mud. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. Clear as mud. There's so. a whole lot of mud. <laughs> A lot of mud with those rivers running down yeah there. okay we've of course we've been talking with uh ed greenwood uh you know forgotten realms creator writer of, of much D lore forgotten realms lore fascinating modules or uh novels i meant to say you know modules too um and then of course we've been talking to alex cammer who among other things running uh game hole con uh, which hopefully will still go this November. And True Dungeon is also doing a lot of really cool RPG design. And I just I want to thank both of you uh, for being here tonight and for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to watching the Border Kingdoms drop. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This was great. All right, hot shot. So you got a golden palomina between your knees and no ring. Now what? Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane